So in today's class, we're gonna discuss about majorly into your Linux command. Okay, your Linux line in tools. Along with that, we're gonna discuss about web application and the types of an attack into a web application. Okay, so before we start, let me take you to the tour of a Linux first. Let me quickly uh, power on my machine in the meantime. Okay. Now, this is how your Kali Linux looks like. Okay. So this is the place where we're going to play around. This is the place where the uh, particular uh, this cyber security enthusiast work on this is the place where your hacker also work on the pen tester also work on okay so in this we have a terminal this is the place or you can say this is your playground Okay, from here, you are going to give your input. From here, you are going to attack into any of this particular system or network or any of the particular environment. Okay, here you're gonna give your input as a command. Now, quickly, let's look into the command which you can use. So, we'll go with step by step. We'll start with a basic and we'll try to show you some of the intermediate commands as well. Uh, let me open it once again for you. So what we have to do simply go inside and terminal a black window will pop up now inside and black window. Now can you see something in the blue has been written over here. Okay, now whenever we open this terminal we logged in as a normal user. Okay, right now I'm a normal user. So if I want to give my input, if I want to write any particular any particular command, I will be claiming my particular root user. Okay, so what I will be doing, simply I am going to perform, I will be escalating my privileges from a normal user to a root user. Now to do that, we have a command by the name sudo su. Okay, super user do or you can say the substitute user. So we are just changing from a normal user to a root user. Now, if I hit a sudo so can you see it is asking for a password, the password of your Kali. Okay, so whenever you logged inside in Kali, you will go with an ID and password, the same password you're gonna use inside this. Okay, now the prompt has been changed. The color has been changed. Previous to that, Kali Kali, now root Kali along with that. Previous to that, we are having a dollar sign over here. As of now, it's an hash. What it has been saying that I have signed in as a root user. Okay, now. On the right hand side, can you see a home slash Kali has been written. Now this home slash Kali is what? This is the location where you have been setting it. Okay, so we are going to differentiate with this slash. Now this slash is known as your file system and this thing is known as your directories. In Windows, we call it as a folder. In Linux, we call it as a directories. Okay, right now I'm inside an Kali directory. Okay, slash has been differentiated or uh, it, it means your file system. Now, if I want to see what is there inside this particular directory or what is there inside this particular folder, so I will go with the command ls. That means list whatever they are inside this particular folder. LS is going to show you all the files inside this. 
we have a text file we have another directory we have an image file okay it is going to show you each and everything what is there inside this particular file this one thing again ls a okay now this ls a is going to show you all the hidden files as well how to differentiate that with an dot anything starts with an dot those are your hidden files okay now i have one more command along with this ls hyphen la that means list all in your long format it is going to show you when this particular file has been created or directory has been created along with the privileges okay now can you see read write permission has been provided for this particular directory okay now how to differentiate that now the file will always going to have and read write now if there is d has been written in front of that that particular permission that means it's a directory followed by the permission whatever the permission are read write or an executable permission okay now when i'm talking about an permission permission goes with R stands for read, W stands for write, and X stands for execute. Okay, now if I want to change any particular permission of the file, I can do that. Okay, now already there are certain permission has been given over here that is your read write rw hyphen hyphen a single hyphen r hyphen hyphen r hyphen hyphen okay now this particular is your owner this particular permission is for groups and this particular permission is for others owner mean here user okay so the root user is having a permission of a read write group is having a only a read permission others are having only a read permission now again this permission comes with an binary format into an hexadecimal format so for a read we have a value four for write we have a two and for an execute we have an one so the sum is your seven okay now if i want to change this particular file permission i can do that okay so we have a command by the name of an ch mod that is your change the moderation of the file okay so whatever i want to uh, provide a permission to that file so i will be going with an ch mod plus whatever the permission is for an write i will go with w for the read i will go with r for an execute i will go with w followed by the file name okay now that particular file will be having the same permission okay now one more thing if i'm going with the ch mod command plus w that means it is going to give the writable permission not only to this user to this as well and to this as well to group as well and to other as well okay now there will be a question into your mind what if i want to give the permission only to this user not to other i don't want to give them permission i don't want to give them and write permission i don't want to give them a read permission as well that's all i don't want to give any permission to group and to other i can do that remember about this we are going to use this thing now 
okay if i want to give only readable permission or let's say i want to give all the permission only to the owner so what i will be doing i will be going with an command ch mod followed by the what is the sum of read write and execute okay so followed by the sum of it all the permission to the first owner and no permission to other so we are going to change the permission like this okay so let's quickly try into this and try to change the permission So we'll go with this file xyz.txt. Okay, so the command is chmod followed by first we'll go with one single permission that is of an executable permission followed by the file name. So the command is chmod. I want to give the executable permission. Followed by the file name. Okay. Now, previous to that, let's see where was my file by the name of an ABCD. Okay, here it is. It's holding a permission of read, write, read, and read. Okay, now let's go ahead. Let's see what all the permission has been provided. So along with a read write executable permission has been provided not only to this user to other users as well. Now if I want to give only all the privileges all the permissions only to an root user. So we are going with an chmod followed by the sum of it. All the permission to first user and no permission to other user. Okay, so this is how we are going to change the permission or we are going to change that per change that particular single user permission again if you want to change the ownership as well we go with an ch own command followed by the uh, particular uh, owner which we want to give this particular uh, file to which owner followed by the file name okay now I can see there are multiple other directories as well. Okay, right now I am setting into this directory. I want to change, I want to move into other directory. Okay, so I will be going with a command cd. That means change the directory followed by the directory name. Okay, so let's suppose let's go inside and downloads. So CD followed by <coughs> downloads. So 
location has been changed. To check inside, what is there inside and download? There are some files. Okay. Now, if I want to go back, go one directory back. So I am going with the command cd space double dot. Double dot means one directory back. If I go with a single dot, it is going to take you into the same directory. Okay, so we will go with double dot. I am one directory back. Okay, now if you don't know in which directory you are in, in which particular folder you are in, so you are going to go with a command pwd present working directory. I am inside this directory. And if you want to check which user you are, whether you are a root user or you are a normal user, so you are going with a command, who am I? I am a root user. Okay, now let's suppose I want to create a new directory. I want to make a new directory. Okay, so we are going with a command mkdir. That means make a directory followed by the directory name. Let's go with the master class. Let's suppose I want to create a new directory by the name of a master class. Okay, now let's go ahead and try to check whether my directory has been created or not. So I go with a command ls. Directory has been created. Okay, now let's try to go inside this. So the command is cd followed by the directory name. Okay, I'm inside this directory. There is nothing inside this directory. Okay. Now we are going to create a file inside this directory first. Okay, now to create a file, we go with an touch command. Okay, followed by the file name. So whatever file you want to give, whatever file name you want to give, so you will be going with that particular name. So let's go, uh, let's, let's suppose I want to create a file by the name of a fundamental. .txt, my file should be a txt file. File has been created. Now, as of now, this file is empty. I want to fill this. I want to store some information inside this file. Okay, so we can do that as well. Directly with your terminal. Okay, now we have an editor inside your terminal. So to open that particular uh, editor, we go we use a command nano. Followed by the file name. Okay, so in this we are going to give our input whatever we want to write. Okay, so this is my input. I want to save this. So we will go with and control X. After that, it is going to ask me save modified buffer. I will go with yes. That means Y and hit enter. Okay, so my data has been saved. Now, my data has been saved. I am not aware it's been saved or not. I need to check that. Okay. Now, if we want to check your information has been stored inside this particular file or not, so you will, you will be going with a command with a cat. Capture whatever they are inside this particular file followed by the file name. Here it is. Now I have one particular file inside this 
master class directory, I want to move this file from a master class to let's suppose inside your music folder, inside your music directory. Okay, so we are going to use a command that is your CP. CP means copy. Copy what? Copy the file. Which file? Fundamental. Where you want to copy it? So we are going to give the path where we want to save this particular, where we want to copy this particular file. So the path for the music is, it is inside and home. Inside home, there is an particular one more directory by the name of an Kali. Inside Kali, we have a directory by the name of a music. Okay, so the address has been given where I want to copy my particular file. Okay, now let's go ahead and try to check inside your music directory whether my file has been copied or not. So we are going with a command or else we are going we can go with cd as well cd space dot dot then we'll go inside your music or else we can go with cd followed by the address of the directory that is your home kali music can you see path has been changed now let's go ahead and try to see whether it's been stored or not, whether that particular file has been copied or not. So to look inside this, what was the command? What command we have been using so far? To check inside your directory, what is there? ls list. Is my file has been copied over here? Okay, now if you want to move this particular file from here to another directory, let's say I want to move this fundamental file inside your downloads. Okay, so we are going with an MV command. Move, move what? Your particular file. Where you want to move, we are going to give that particular location. Okay, I want to move this file inside your downloads. So, can you see? Nothing inside your music. File has been moved. Where it has been moved? Inside your download. Let's go and check whether it's been moved or not. Okay, so CD followed by the location where you want to go. Okay. It has been moved. Now, if you remember, we created a directory. Okay, and what was the directory name which we have created? Master class. Now I don't want this directory. I want to delete it. I have my file. Uh, it's not required for me. I want to delete it particular directory. Okay, so to delete the directory, we can go with rmdir followed by the directory name, but this command will not going to delete your directory. So there will be a question into your mind why this particular person has been saying to remove the directory we can go with RM, rmdir but along with that he's saying it won't be getting deleted how that particular is possible let me show you so rmdir remove the directory which directory master class whatever i am getting failed to remove master class directory is not empty. That's the reason why I said. 
as of now inside this there is one particular file that's why this command has been asking me to delete it first then delete this directory okay now i don't want to go inside that directory don't want to delete it i straight away want to delete the whole directory okay so we can go with a command rm followed by r remove it recursively okay i don't want that particular directory whatever inside that directory as well delete that file too it's been deleted so this is how uh, yeah, a few of the commands will be working uh, along with that let me show you some more thing you can use it over here okay now inside your linux you have pre default uh, what you can say a dictionary a password dictionary okay now that particular password dictionary was named by an rock queue if you want to look that particular password dictionary so we'll go with a command first let's so let's particular see where it's the where that particular dictionary has been stored so we are going to locate so locate is going to search where that particular file is followed by the file name rocku.txt this is the file which i want to locate now this particular rocku.txt has been sitting inside this destination user share word list so let's go ahead and try to go inside this location so to go inside that location we are going with a command cd followed by the location usr share what list okay so here is your file okay now if i open this particular file it is going to show you all the well known password okay now again it will show you n number of password so before to that let me show you how many the particular passwords are there inside it so okay so for that we have a particular command for it to check how many total number of password is there inside it inside this particular rocku.txt so we'll go with a command perfect here you have okay i simply gone with a command cat followed by the particular file name and what i did i particularly asked him to copy okay uh, to count the word line by line wc hyphen l how many password do you have okay now this particular file keeps on updating so whenever your kali release a patch it is going to update this file as well all the well known password now if you want to see what is there inside this particular file cat followed by the file name this are your well known password which you used to perform a password attack it is going to cross verify the user name and password and in front of you it is going to show you the password the cracked password so which we do while performing an dictionary attack it is not going to stop so easily almost the uh, particular uh, words are there inside this but in this dictionary is almost of an 1.4 crores okay so it will take time so in the meantime let me quickly open up a new terminal
okay now whenever we want to perform any particular scan in any machine so we use certain tools okay now again there are a few fundamentals of an attack or of an hack you can say if you want to perform a pen test again it should be gone to certain rules step number one information gathering we have the information we'll go with step number two that is your scanning part if the scanning has been done we will go with step number three enumeration if the enumeration has been done we'll go with step number four that is your hacking okay collected the information now we got if we want to scan any particular network or any particular ip okay but before to the scan this has been done into three steps again and scanning what we are going to do at step number one we are going to check whether the host is live or not okay now again to check whether my host is live or not we have certain tools for it and we have certain utilities for it so we use ping we use hping3 we use and map as well okay for if my first process has been done my first step has been done i will move into step number two my step number two what has been saying to check how many number of ports are there open port i have the information i will move to step number three okay now what my step number three has been saying find what all services have been running in that port okay so this three process we are going to do inside your scanning okay now again I talked about an nmap so let's quickly discuss about the tool and map what does and map does okay now and map is a tool which is going to give you or you can say it's a scanning tool which is used to send a raw IP packet now there are different ways to find out first it is going to check whether the host is live or not once it has been done it is going to check what are the operating system is been running inside in that particular IP okay along with that it is going to check what are the firewalls have been used what are the open source framework have been used so there are dozens of characteristics what this particular and map to okay now and map has been working into and five steps so what are the step at step number one it is going to perform a ping sweep okay so ping sweep is what it is going to send a ping request into all the subnet so if he gets the reply all the list will be displayed in front of you okay step one has been done it will move to step number two and step number two what is going to check it is going to check and dns lookup okay now dns lookup is what this is a default and map is going to perform okay so while performing a scanning you are to go you are going to give an ip address isn't it okay now what this and map is going to true it is going to check what is the domain of this IP? And what is the domain name associated with it? Your DNS lookup has been performed at step number two. Okay, once that has been done, it will move to step number t three. In step number three, it is going to do a reverse DNS. And what is going to be a reverse DNS? if you check by the name 
okay or else if you write in particular ip it is going to find out the name of the forward dns let's suppose if you go with an and map followed by the ip address or let's suppose let's take in best example over here and map followed by google.com it is going to give you the ip address of this okay once that has been done at step number four it is going to check open ports how many open ports are there which particular port is an open port now port is what it's an endpoint communication okay for every service we are going to denote with an port number we are going to identify it which particular service is been running okay for stdp we have an port number 80 https 443 telnet we have an port 23 okay so there are list of an port you can look into that you will have a list of it if you search it over the google it will going to give you that all the list what are the port and what are the services used with that port okay and at the step number four it is going to perform a nsc now what this nsc is it's your unmap script engine okay now inside this nmap there is a pre-built script has been stored okay and when i'm talking about a pre-built script there are lots of it okay what does nmap is going to do it is going to run that particular and map service in that IP along with that if any port is an open port and he knows what are the services have been running in that port it is going to run that particular service run that particular script which belong to that service to find out the well-known vulnerability okay now if you want to see what are those scripts are and how that particular scripts look like so we can look as well again We'll go with and locate command. Let's try to see where this particular scripts have been stored. Locate and map. Script. Here you have. List of it. You name the service. You have all the script. Belongs to that service. okay if i want to see how many scripts are there stored inside this so we can look at that as well it's hard to count each and every script line by line so what we are going to do we will ask our linux to count it okay so locate and map script followed by i want him to count word by word and line by line word count line by line how many scripts do you have six is a six okay now This is how your map work into in five steps. Now we have an option that we can use with and map. Okay. So if you want to see all the detail output, what we are going to do, we are going to do go with and command and map.
and map followed by hyphen v followed by the ip address of my target it is going to perform a it is going to give you a detailed output Okay, so we call it as a verbosity scan. Okay, now if you remember, Nmap has been working into five states. First state is your ping sweep, second is your DNS lookup, third is your reverse DNS, fourth is your open port, fifth is your NSC. Now, if, you, if I particularly want to block the first request, that is your ping sweep, I can do that. I want Nmap not to perform in ping sweep. I can do that as well. So we can go with a command and map followed by hyphen P, that is your capital P and small n. It is going to block ping sweep request. First step will not get performed. Directly it will start with step number two. Total count of n ports. So we have in total of n six Wi Fi. Three five ports. By default, if we run an ends and map, it is not gonna search. It is not gonna scan all this six five five three five port. It is going to scan only the top thousand port. Okay. Now, if I want to run the and map scan in all this port, so what I want to do, I will be giving him a specific command and map hyphen p hyphen what i'm asking him to scan in all the ports okay now let's suppose port number 443 is an open port now i want to scan only in to this particular port, I can do that as well. And map hyphen P. Hyphen P means you are specifying a single port, a specific port. Okay. If you want to check what is the service version has been running. Hyphen capital S small, sorry. Your small S capital V. To check the service version. If you want to check what is the operating system has been running in that particular IP. hyphen capital O. Okay. So this are some of the scan you can work with an nmap. So let's suppose I have one machine has been running parallel to me and if we want to search the IP address of that machine, so first I want to know what is the IP address of my machine. To check the IP address of my machine, I will go with a command ifconfig first. It is going to give the IP address of my machine. Now what I'm going to do, I will going to run an ARP scan inside this particular subnet mask to check what all IPs or what are machines have been connected with this IP. Uh, Python scan followed by the IP address. I want to run the scan into a specific subnet mask. That is your class C. Zero slash 24. 24 means how many bits do we have? 8888. Eight, eight, eight. Okay, and in this eight, in this particular uh, 8888 bit, how many bits are open? There are three bits are open. So 8 plus 8 plus 8, that is your 24. 
okay so as of now it is giving me for the ip address now always remember i am only running there is only one particular machine has been running it is giving me for the ip address now this dot one belongs to the network id in which network you have been sitting in okay this dot 254 belongs to and broadcast id whatever thing you have been broadcast whatever thing you have been uh, broadcasting whatever message you have been broadcasting it is using this ip address to broadcast all the thing okay dot 2 is your default gateway from where you are getting an internet inside this this is your default gateway and we are left with one ip 128 now this ip belongs to this machine Now, let me show you a few of the maps scan and map followed by let's suppose we want to see what is the operating system has been running into that IP 192, 168, 80, 128. Started the scan. Here you have the list of it along with this. It is giving me the open port details as well. Okay, now port number 80 is open, that is your STDP. Let's suppose I want to specify this particular port, I want to run and then map and want to specify this port. So I will go with hyphen P followed by 80. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to check what other service version has been running inside this port followed by the IP address. Okay, so 128 is the IP, correct. Wait for the result. Here you have. Service is your HTTP version, Apache HTTP D 2.2.8. Okay. So you can use all those command uh, to scan uh, scan the network with the help of an nmap. Okay, now. We have some TCP flags as well. So when I'm talking about an TCP flags, we have an SYN packet that is a synchronize. We have an acknowledgement. We have an finish. We have an reset flag. We have an push flag. And we have an urgent flag. Okay, now I can use this flag with your Nmap. Always remember when we are communicating with any system or we have been establishing any particular communication that has been done with your three-way handshake. Your communication always established with your three-way three handshake. Now, how that particular three-way handshake is being done? Let's suppose this is your system number A, this is your system number B. Now, system A wants to send any particular message to system D. So what he is going to do first, first he is going to send a TCP flag. So TCP flag which is going to send is your SYN flag, that is your synchronization. Okay, so TCP communication starts with your SYN flag. So any communication if you want to start, it's always start with this packet. Okay, now in response to that, B is going to tell what? B is going to send you SYN acknowledgement. 
okay perfect i received your packet acknowledge it back now in respond to a it is going to acknowledge it again this is your three-way handshake now you can send any particular message you can communicate with it further okay now how we are going to use this particular three-way handshake uh sorry in this particular tcp flag picture then map okay now let's see we have a scan by the name tcp full connect it goes with hyphen st okay if i want to check any particular port is open or not so i can go with tcp full connect scan now how what this tcp full connect scan is going to run what is going to how that particular uh, thing is going to perform it is going with this three-way handshake your sin packet has been sent in respond to that sin act has been sent in respond to that acknowledgement is sent if you are getting a reply back from nb that means your port is open okay now whenever you run any particular nmap, map okay let's suppose i go with and map followed by the ip address that's it I had not given any particular script. I had not given any particular command in between. I am simply running this and map followed by the IP. It is going to run a default scan. Okay, so your default scan is hyphen S S. We call it half connect or stealth scan. Okay, by default and map run the stealth scan. Now what is going to happen over here? This is your A, this is your B. Again, sending a packet that is your SYN packet and respond to that, SYNAC will gonna receive. Now A, what he is going to do? He is not going to send an acknowledgement. He is going to close the communication. He is going to send a reset flag. He already got a respond, respond. That means port is open. Why he is going to establish the connection? Why he is going to make that particular connection? Make uh, why he is going to leave that particular particular connection idle? He is simply going to close it. Okay, he got his particular response. He know there is an open port. Now he can perform an attack. So why he will let that communication to be occurred? He simply close that connection. Okay, now. We have one more thing that is your fin scan. Okay, now in this, what is going to go? Let's suppose this is A, this is B. A is going to send your finish flag. You are not going to get a reply back. Why? To establish a connection, we required a SYN packet. Okay, A is sending a finish flag. B is getting confused. He has not established a connection. Why is sending me an finish flag? In response to that, he is not going to give him any particular acknowledgement. No acknowledgement means your port is open. Okay, now how you are going to check how the port is, how, how particular close port is look like. So whenever, let's suppose A sends any packet, any packet means either it can, it, it has sent a sync, acknowledgement, either finish, reset, push, urge, any particular packet. And respond to that, he is getting a reset and acknowledgement. That means your port is closed. 
whenever you receive a reset and acknowledgement that means your port is closed if you are not getting a reply back or else you are getting a reply back with an acknowledgement that means your port is open but if you are getting a reset and acknowledgement always remember that's a closed port Okay, now, if you remember, I've shown you the script. So we go with then locate and map script command. Here you have list of it. Now let's suppose I want to check only particular, let's say, SNMP script. Apart from that, I want, I don't want any other script. I can do that as well. I can filter out my result. So what I'm going to do, nmap script followed by grep and which script I want. So I want SS, no, SNMP. Here you have only SNMP script. Okay, like this. If you want any particular SMB script, here you have. If you want to see any particular STDP script, here you have. Okay, so you can simply filter out your result by this small, small commands which you can use inside with your Kali. Okay, now, this one more thing I want to discuss with you all about an software vulnerability. Okay, now, what is a software vulnerability? Software vulnerability is what? It's a weakness inside your code. Okay, now this software vulnerability not only affecting inside an app, it is going to affect your operating system as well. Okay, for example, if you are, if you are having an particular Android, now who is going to perform a pen test in this Android? Google, who created this particular OS. If you have an iOS, who is going to perform a pen test into this iOS? Who has created this particular operating system. Now what we do, we perform an application test. Mobile application testing, okay? Now that particular application will get you inside that mobile. If there is any particular weakness or flaw inside your software, it's gonna affect your system. Okay. Now, when we are talking about vulnerability and the reason behind it, it can be a weak host configuration as well. Again, it can be due to an ineffective policies and procedures which have been used in an organization or inside a house. Let's suppose default ID and password of a router. We are not uh, setting up an ID and password. Okay, again, unsecure root account. If your root account is not secured, how we are going to protect your whole system? Example, 100% of permission is open for the user, normal user, where that all the, all the particular access is not required. If there is any attack happened into that user account straight away, he will be having the root privileges. Again, it's a flaw. If there is any particular weak network configuration, any open port, any particular service exposed, unsecure protocol, instead of HTTPS, we are using HTTP. If there is any particular weak encryption has been using, yes, it is going to create a vulnerability, a flaw. 
Okay. Now, if this particular vulnerability is been exposed, what will be the impact to the organization? Data will get breached. All the confidential data will get transferred. Isn't it? Data loss, availability loss, financial loss, reputational loss. Isn't it? Okay, so that's the reason we are securing our environment. Okay, so here are a few of the file command. Okay, so here are the list of it. What does the file command can do? LS for listing directory, all format file. Okay, PWD for present working directory to make a directory, MKDIR to remove a file, delete a file, RM to delete the directory recursively, RM hyphen R, delete. Okay, to copy CP, MV followed by to move. Okay, so if you want to see the date, we can go with uh, uh, the particular syntax date. If you want to open the calculator calendar, we go with an CAL time, UP time, who am I, who as you logged in is. If you want to see, show, if you want to see what are the kernel configuration, we go with an U name hyphen A. Okay, so here we have having some of the authentication factor. Now, when I'm talking about an authentication factor, what this particular factor has been saying, something you know authentication, something you ask, something you do. Okay, let's suppose if I want to uh, collect some amount from an ATM. Okay, so what I will be using? ATM card, something you authenticated, you have an a pin to access that particular card, something you are, something you do. Physically, you will be visiting that particular ATM to remove that particular amount. Isn't it? Okay, now how this particular authentication has been designed? Authentication has been designed to a selected technology that meets the requirement. Again, what are the requirement? Security pillars. confidentiality, integrity, and availability. We are maintaining it. Every time we want to meet our target, we want to meet our goal, we are maintaining our CIA trade. Okay, so we have seen multiple authentic uh, authentication factors. Okay, so something you know, what you know, username and password, something you own, that is your device, and something you are physically, what you are using, accessing that device with your fingerprint, isn't it? This is your multi-factor authentication. Now, along with that, okay, so we have two factor as well. In two-factor authentication, what do we have? Yes. Nowadays, we are using it recursively, isn't it? If you want to do any transaction, first, what we do? First, give the PIN number. Along with that, after that, we received a particular OTP. Isn't it? A digit from the bank. And we are going to give that particular OTP. We are going to insert that particular OTP which is going to verify it, that you are the owner, you are the authenticate user. Okay, that is your two-factor authentication nowadays, which we have been using. Okay, along with that, we have a biometric authentication as well. In biometric authentication, it's a mechanized one. It will going uh, to have an account access to a psychological feature. 
either it can be a fingerprint i can it either it can be iris pattern it is going to change the behavioral pattern so what do we have we have fingerprint facial or you can say the retina scan again physically you should be presented over there to go with some biometric authentication a human with this been required for it isn't it okay now next thing we are going to talk about is your web application okay now when you hear about this web application one particular thing come always comes into your mind that is your client server model okay so whenever we request any particular page for example like if i want to visit to a facebook.com okay let's suppose this is me this is the web server of your facebook inside this what do we have the application and the database let's take an example over here now first what i am going to do i will go, going to open my browser inside the browser i am going to give the url www.facebook.com now my request will go or it going to redirect inside this okay now this particular thing is going to respond you back with an login page isn't it now in that there are two fields again username and password you are going to give your input you will be entering your username and password and click on submit your request again will flow inside this now inside this it will go inside your application now what is going to do what is going to happen it has been forwarded inside your database now database is going to check whether you have given all the correct input or not your credentials are correct or not it is going to verify it once it has been verified it is going to reply it back to an application now that application is going to give you the page if the credentials are correct you will get an home page if wrong it will ask you to give the password again okay now web application is an application software that run in a web browser unlike software program that run locally and natively onto your operating system of the device okay it is used to design for the wide variety for the user okay again for an organization for the individual for any particular device case commonly web application can include your web browser web mail online calculator in the e-commerce e e shops nowadays we have been using it isn't it okay so there was a one particular community who has been taking care about all the web application okay and that community is known as your oas open web application security project okay now in 20 uh, 2003 they created a particular web application okay and they made it public now after that what happened when the particular web application is uh, is been released into an public there were many attack has been happened okay so what this owasp has done they started categorizing all those attack into the top 10 list okay and they came up with an top 10 attack top 10 well known attack now this attack keeps on updating in every 3 year okay first list was been created in 2003 then in 2006 2007 2010 13 13 previous to that we were been using the list of in 2017 now it's been updated nowadays we are going with a 2021 top 10 list
This is the latest top 10 list of your wasp. Okay. Now, in this, what do we have? At the top, it's a token access control. Second, it's a cryptographic failure. Third is your injection. Fourth is your insecure design. Fifth is your security misconfiguration. Sixth is your vulnerability, uh, vulnerable and outdated component. Seven is your identification and authentication failure. Software and data integrity failure. Security logging and monitoring failure. Server side request falsely. Okay, now these are what? These are your top 10 list. Top 10 list of an attack which has been going by its state. Okay. Now, in your broken access control, what has it been saying? There is a vulnerability which has been related to all the uh, improper enforced restriction. Or you can say it's an action to an authenticated user. So what is that attacker is going to do? Attacker is going to exploit all those flaw and going to have an access to the unauthorized function or you can say the data. Okay, it is going to view all the sensitive file and it is going to modify it as well. He's, he can do that too. He can change it. He can use the data. He can have an access to all the data. Okay, if your cryptographic failure attack has been done, many web application and API, okay, do not properly protect your sensitive information, such as your financial data, healthcare data, or any particular personal identification information, you can say the PII. Okay, so moreover, many application developer fail to implement strong cryptographic key. Okay, they use any, if, if it has been used any old keys, again, it may fail to enforce the proper key management. In such case, your sensitive data can be transmitted into a clean text format. So an HTTP, attacker can use the information, attacker can steal all the information from this such weak uh, protected data, uh, particularly encryption. Okay, now an injection attack, what is going to do? Uh, it is a flaw inside your SQL command injection or you can say LDAP injection. Okay, so when this thing has been occurred, it is occurred when there is an untrusted data of any particular uh, interpret of a command of a query has been sent. Okay, now what attacker is going to do? Attacker can host the data. He can trick inside it. He can interpret inside your a particular command line. Okay, he is going to inject his query inside the database. From there, he is going to collect all the information. Once the query has been injected, he can have an access to it. Okay, so I will be showing you the injection attack down the line. Okay, that's a very famous attack and, and well known attack. Okay, so uh, next is your insecure design. In insecure design, the, the particularly the application development team, uh, it is going to check for a security control. Again, it's not properly implemented. All the security control is not properly implemented. It can lead to a business risk. It can lead to various flaw. The design flaw can be compromised. The integrity, confidentiality, authenticity of the data can be breached. Attacker can exploit those files. They can hijack the session. Okay, so particularly man in the mental attacks has been done inside your insecure design attack. Okay, next we have is your security misconfiguration. Now the security misconfiguration is the most common issue in your web security. Due to which, again, it's in part of your manual or you can say your hardware configuration uh, if we are using any insecure default configuration, if we are having some particular ports are open, if there is an HTTP headers have been misconfigured, error message has been containing any sensitive information, that can lead to a flaw. 
Okay, so there are many old and poor configuration, particularly into an XML. So over there, uh, if you uh, refer with this XML document, you will see there are list of and DOS attack has been performed. So that organization has been faced multiple losses with your security misconfiguration. Okay. Next we have is your vulnerable and outdated component. Okay, now in this component, such as your libraries, framework, and other software modules, which have been running, they are having, uh, let's suppose they are have running with the same privileges, what their application has. Now, the software and component need to be updated and need to be patched end to end timely, isn't it? If your software is not getting updated, if you are not getting updated for that particular software, they are using the, if you are using any particular older version of a software, that can lead to an vulnerability, isn't it? That can lead to a risk. There is no patch till now. If there is any particularly exposed vulnerability, it is going to it is going to have a serious damage, serious data loss. Isn't it? Attacker can take over to an application along with that, he can take over to the server as well. Now, next what we have is your identification and authentication failure. Okay, now in this, your application has been implemented with an auto update feature. So such application uh, may download an update from an unauthorized or you can say the previous trusted sources. Okay, without containing or without having the sufficient integrity check. Now attacker can take an advantage with this flaw. Okay, if the owner is been disabling the auto update. Now what is happening over here? You are uh, getting a, clicking on a check onto an auto update and that particular application is trying to download the update from an unsecure website, or you can say the previous trusted source, that can lead to a serious damage again. If the data has been encoded or it's been sanitized, again, it can go into a format. Attacker can alter the data. Attacker can lead to an insecure serialization flaw. Okay. Now, next what we have is your security logging and monitoring failures inside this. Uh, it is again uh, insufficient log monitoring or you can say the local storage or an log or an error message, inappropriate alert message has been failed. Multiple login attempt into an application, failing to an identity threat into an advanced Such application can lead to a sensitive information. Attacker can compromise all the system, can tamper the credential, can destroy the data. Okay, so at 10, what we have, we have a server side request forgery. Okay, again, it's a web application or you can say web security vulnerability that has been arised when you are taking a remote resources of any application without verifying the URL. Okay, now attacker can leverage to this vulnerability and can uh, can take an advantage. Okay, they can modify all the internal resources. They can steal the sensitive information, which has been sent with a malicious request. SSR vulnerability. Okay, they are also allowed attacker to send a malicious request to the internal system. Even if they are, if you are using a secured firewall, no worries. Completely fine. If you are under an attack, particularly written SSRF, he can send that all the requests internally using your internal network and all to the system. How many firewall you have deployed? No release of that. There will be no problem for him. Okay. So let's quickly let me show you a particular attack 
and we are going to perform one thing and good attack into uh, one tested website let me show you that okay so before to that uh, let me tell you we are going to perform an sql injection now that sql injection has been working in two and five steps okay so what are the steps let me write it down for you first Okay, first there is a condition to perform this SQL injection. Condition is your variable should be equal to number. Then you can perform an SQL injection. Okay, then you have a high chance to perform an injection attack into this. Okay, again, there are certain criteria for it. We are going to see and step by step step one what is going to say what, what my step number one has been saying step number one has been saying to break the developer code okay so whatever thing has been arriving let's say www dot infosectrain.com this is the URL HTTP now this URL has been going you you will be seeing this URL inside your particular URL box now that request is not flowing into the same state it is going in this steps into the list states okay we cannot see this double quote this is not visible to us okay so what we are going to do we are going to break this developer code now what is happening over here this double code is been balancing this double code okay so we are going to break this we will try to create an error into the website once it has been done we are moving into step number two what my step number two has been saying developer code has been broke after that we are going to balance this thing we are going to get our page back okay now let's suppose uh, again to balance the query we have uh, some of the commenting vector okay for particularly for ms sql this is a database name it goes with a commenting vector hash if the database is of an ms sql the commenting vector will be hyphen hyphen if the database is of an oracle okay again the commenting vector is in hyphen hyphen again we have a custom commenting vector as well okay if this particular commenting vector is not working we can go with this custom commenting vector are hyphen hyphen space hyphen then we have hyphen hyphen plus hyphen then we have hyphen hyphen slash hyphen these are your custom commenting vector okay once the query has been balanced we will move into step number three now what my step number three has been saying okay you had balanced the query now we are going to find out in that database how many number of columns are there once we have the list of a number of column we are going to find out which column is vulnerable once we have the list of it we are going to take an advantage of that vulnerable column we are going to collect an information from that call vulnerable column okay or else you can say you are going to exploit that vulnerable column so these are the five steps we will be looking at down the line we will be performing this 
try to collect some information from that particular website. So we're gonna perform our SQL injection into this website, this and test website. I will be showing you how that thing has been done. Okay, now, if you guys remember, to perform an SQL injection, there are certain condition. What was the condition? Variable equals to number. Okay, so we are gonna check over here. Inside this particular URL, where my variable equals to number has been coming, we are going to perform our attack into that field. Okay, now let's just quickly browse into the website till then we get an variable equals to number. So let's go one by one into an home. Okay. So as of now, it is saying index.php. My this condition has been not meeting over here. Let's go ahead and see inside your categories. Over here, categories.php is not meeting my particular condition. Let's go inside this category first. Now, can you see something? Cat equals to one. variable equals to number, okay? So we're gonna perform our attack into this field. Okay, now, we'll go with step by step. Step number one, what has been saying? Break the developer code. How your URL has been going? Into this code. This code is balancing this code. So we are making this unbalanced. We are going to unbalance this particular query which has been given by the developer. So how we are gonna do that? We are simply putting a single code at the end. Okay, now the single code is going to unbalance this whole query. Okay, now to balance it, we required one more single code. This double code is balancing this, this single code is balancing this, but at present over here, we don't have any particular thing which has been balancing over here. Okay, so if I simply go with single quote at the end. What do I have? An error. Okay, now always remember, errors are your best friend. Okay, so whenever you see any particular error, you will get an information from that. My SQL server, previous to that, are we aware that this particular website has been hosted into a My SQL server? No, isn't it? Now I have some more information of my target that they are using My SQL. Isn't it? Perfect. Now I will be moving into step number two. What my step number two has been saying, once the developer code is been broke, we have to balance it now. Okay, so in step number two, we are going to balance our query. How to balance it? Remember about a uh, particular commenting vector?
for the MySQL, the commenting vector is an hash. For MSSQL, commenting vector is hyphen hyphen. For the Oracle, it's again an hyphen hyphen. Then we have custom as well. That is a hyphen hyphen slash hyphen 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 space hyphen 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 plus hyphen. Okay, so we'll go with the commenting vector. If this thing has been blocked, we can go with a custom as well. Okay, so if the developer is smart, he can block this commenting vector. Okay, so we can go with a custom. So let's go ahead and try with an each by each. Okay. So database is in MySQL. That means which commenting vector I can use. I will be using over here. Hash. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to use our commenting vector. You see, I used an hash data. That particular developer haven't block this commenting vector what i did i get my page back isn't it i got my page back so now i can place my code in between this okay to collect more information now step number three what is step number three has been saying find a number of column. Okay, so how your database look like? Into and rows and column. This is how your database look like. Into and rows and column. Okay, so we are going to check how many columns are there inside this database. Okay, now if we have the list of it after that we are going to find out the vulnerable column okay so let's go ahead and try to find out the column first again we have two categories for it so we can go with an order by or group by Okay, now if you want to find out the number of column, two things can be used, order by and group by, order by uh, is going to arrange your value particularly into an ascending order or into a descending order. Group by, what is going to do? It is going to uh, uh, go with a particular format. Okay, so let's go with an order by and let's try to see how many columns are there. Again, what I will be doing, I will be doing a guesswork over here. Okay, as of now, I don't know how many columns are there. So we are going to go with a guess over there until and unless we get our page back. So we are going to check how many of it. Okay, so let's suppose there are 100 columns out of 100. That means there are no hundred column. Let's go with fifty. Again, again error. That means no fifty columns. Let's go with twenty five now. Again an error. Let's go with 15, nothing. Let's go with five. Perfect, I got my page back. That means there are at least five columns. Okay, now we are going to verify how many total are there. Okay, so let's try to increase our digit now from five to seven till we get our page back into a normal state. Okay, perfect. That means there are seven. Go with nine. 
great they are nine we already checked 15 let's go ahead and check within 14 no 14 in between 9 and 14 the number can be any again we until and unless we get our page back we have to check it for that 12 nothing perfect that means there are how many columns 11 columns okay now i know how many number of columns are there i will move be, i will be moving to my step number three now what my step number sorry step number four now what my step number four has been saying find the vulnerable column Okay. Now, let me tell you one thing over here. So, this is our database. Okay. So, inside this, we are going to find out the vulnerable column. Now, how that vulnerable column is. So, let's suppose we uh, visited this website and we try to update or we try to upload some of the document or some of the detail of ourselves. We try to create our page. We, we try to create our ID inside this. Okay, so we have a page inside that. We uploaded all the information. Now, while I clicked on submit and this information has been traveling to this database, in between something has been occurred due to my internet failure. My page got crashed. Okay, now what the database is going to do, it is already secured that particular location for you to uh, store the information, but in between, information has not been stored. So we are going to take an advantage of this particularly null column. Okay, so we are going to check which is your null column and inside that we are going to enumerate it. Okay, now again, we will be going with a command union select followed by the number of column that is your 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 followed by an hash. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to find out if there is any vulnerable column or not. Okay. So the command which will I will be using is here union select followed by the number of column one comma two three four five six seven eight nine. 10 and 11. Okay. Now, a broken image. Along with that, look what we have over here. These are your vulnerable columns. Okay, so we are going to enumerate this column already. It has given you the information. Now we are going to take an advantage from this vulnerable column. Okay, now one more thing I can do it. I can filter out all this thing into in one page. I can deliberately do that. Okay, for that, what I can do simply I can go with an minus one lakh value over here because I know there will be no such value by minus one lakh into the database. Any database will be having a minus value. It will start with one, isn't it? Again, developer can block this as well. So deliberately I will go with this to filter out all my information into one page.
Now, now I know there is one more vulnerable column that is your 11. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to take an advantage on all this column. We are going to replace this column. And call out our function. Okay, whatever information we want. For example, I want what database they have been using. So I will call out for a database. Okay, if I want the user name or user detail, I will go with user. I will call out for this function and I want to know which particular uh, version they have been using. Followed by the version, I will call out for this version function over there. Okay, so let's quickly try to replace all this. So my second number is an vulnerable column. So I want a database information from here. Okay, there is one more vulnerable column that is your seven. I want the user information from here. There is again one no more vulnerable column. That is here. Let's take an 11 over here. Okay, there is 9 as well. So let's collect an information from here as well. Version detail. user database which version they have been using okay so like this we can simply enumerate inside this in, in, into any particular field if that field is invulnerable to an sql injection so we can collect an information from there. Not only this, I can get an information user detail as well and try to log in inside it as well. Further, I can do that as well. We have one more thing. We can do uh, a particular uh, automated as well. We have an automated version as well. If uh, we want to go with a manual, we can go with all the steps. If we want to go with an automated, we can go. We can we can perform this inside your Linux box as well. Okay, so let me quickly show you the automated part as well. Okay, so first I will try to open that URL inside my Linux browser. Okay, and the page where I want to perform my attack. So this was the page. So simply copy this page, minimize this thing. So we're gonna use one particular tool. Okay, so that tool is your SQL map. Okay. So this is the tool we are going to use to perform our SQL injection. So
okay so what i did i simply use the tool sql map okay in sql map i want to perform my attack into an url so we will go with an hyphen u hyphen u is for an url to perform an sql injection followed by the in which url we want to perform it hyphen hyphen dbs is for a database collect an information of a database what is the name of the database they have been using and hyphen hyphen batch is for the default setting okay close this function with a default setting now quickly i run this particular syntax and it has given me the result okay so which database do we have a qart okay to perform this manual test over here it almost took 15 to 20 minute over here it almost took 1 to 2 minute hardly that hardly out of that okay now what i will be doing i will be quickly enumerating this particular acquart i will try to collect more information from this database again sql map hyphen u followed by the url now what do i have i have the database name so i will be calling that database hyphen d what was my database name acquart okay and what information i want from this database i want the table names in this database how many tables are there and give me the list of all the tables okay and we'll be closing my function with an default setting in acquart there are eight tables okay now if i am an attacker which particular table i am going to attack okay so we going to quickly enumerate this particular user table so again we'll go with an sql map the database now i know the table name as well so we'll be calling out for the table name that is an users okay and what we are going to do we are going to ask him to dump all the details from this user table followed by closing it dictionary based attack remember about that password dictionary which i have showed you it is performing that attack it is trying to guess the password trying to check with the user name which is an password for that user okay and it will give me the result of it into an hash format now password is getting cracked using a dictionary So let's see what do we get. So it was performing. Okay, the attack has been completed. What information did I get from out of this? Nine entries into an hash format. okay so we got an entries into an hash format so we can use any particular hash engine to dehash or to particular check what is the hash has been used for okay so this is how you are going to perform the manual method to get an information
okay and uh, particularly for an automate uh, particularly for the manual we already performed it and particularly for the automated okay so this is how you can perform your sql injection attack so we have multiple ways to perform it again if i find out any particular vulnerable field i will be inserting my query into that field to get connected with the database and we'll try to get a more information so we have n number of attack we can perform it so this is the one type of an attack one format which we can do so i will be quickly giving you some bit more some some of the information of that that is your security standards okay so we have a gdpr that is your general data protection regulation okay now this gdpr what has been doing these are the types of your legitimated address security okay you can say the whole part of an information security is been affected particularly by an privacy or by an personal data okay now in this privacy is what it's a distinct concept of your security privacy will require to collect uh, or to process any particular per uh, this personal information okay now this gdpr is an european standard base it means to collect all the particular pers uh, this personal information cannot be collected it can be processed or it cannot be retained without the individual informed consent that means the data must be collected and processed only for the stated purpose and the purpose should be cleared and described to the user in a plain language that what the gdpr has been stating and all the information should be secured of that user okay information should not be disclosed okay again there will be an compliance issue uh, if that particular information or uh, uh, any particular uh, this standard is been not followed okay now gdpr does not apply into an american standard subject okay it, it goes with your european countries so in us we have a different national federation law we have a state law along with that uh, we have an us territories uh, where, where this particular laws have been used federation law which has been focused like your fisma okay into a federation department again for the financial health service we have an health insurance portability and accountability we call it as an hipaa as well accountability act okay now some uh, the states have started introdu introducing your horizontal or you can say personal data regulation which is been similar to the gdpr okay so we call it as a ccpa which is your california consumer privacy act payment card industry data security standard okay 
okay now compliance issue can also arise from an industry where your mandate regulations are not been used for example the payment card industry data security standard defines what does this particular thing is been defining that you are into a safe hand all the uh, financial information which is been stored it has been stored securely okay for example if in my url if in into my web page there are certain transaction have been going on so i should be following all this pcd ids standard pc ids standard okay i should maintain all the standards that whatever things have been going whatever information i have been collecting from a user while performing the payment whatever information has been stored all the card details again that should be followed with your pc ids standards and all the details should be going into a secured format and all the details should be showed into a secured way okay again uh, we have uh, particularly uh, a nist checklist as well okay so for an open network application platform we go with the nist security checklist uh, which has been provided by nist government uh, there are the repositories for it so you can check all the application checklist for for particularly for in web as well we have the different checklist and along with that here's the a standard checklist which has been provided into a web server a web application by an owasp okay again owasp is your non profitable organization which has been uh, publishing uh, multiple uh, or you can say several secure uh, application records uh, such as your top 10 list send it now along with that uh, we have a uh, multiple benchmark to secure this guidelines as well okay so it goes with your cis center of internet security what they have been doing again they are non profitable organization the science institute which has been published with your 20 cis control cis uh, risk assessment methodology can be performed into an overall evaluation to to particularly secure your all the security posture okay and we have a uh, the service organization control as well your soc2 which has been evaluating all the internal controls which has been implemented by the service provider which is ensuring all the compliances with the trust service centers okay okay now iso is what iso is your international organization for standardization okay so we have uh, multiple isos which are been uh, particularly for the cyber security framework which is been uh, uh, done uh, particularly done for the uh, cyber security framework okay so we have iso 27001 for an information security management okay so it it's go with an 27001 overall all the 27000 series comes with your information security management yes we call it as an 27k as well okay now 27002 particularly classifying your security control we have 27017 2017 which is or uh, you can say 2018 referring to your cloud security particularly okay now 27701 is been focusing on your personal data and privacy okay we have a uh, 31k list okay 
where ISO 2721K list is for a cyber security. Now this uh, 31K list is for an overall framework for your enterprise risk management. Considering all the risks and opportunities beyond your cybersecurity by including all the financial customer services as well All your legal liability factors Again, this ISO 31k established for the best practice to perform your risk assessment Okay, so we have an CSA team which is your cloud security alliance again those are your non-profitable organization they have been producing multiple resources associated with your cloud service provider, which is your CSP, setting up multiple delivering cloud security platform. Okay, so we have a security guidelines, which has been provided by your cloud security alliance, which is telling you how, uh, what are the best practice to summarize or to analyze the unique challenges into your cloud network, into your cloud environment, how those permission controls can be adapted from there. Okay, so we have a cloud uh, control metrics as well. Again, into a cloud security alliance website, you will see multiple leads, multiple information, list of specific control for an assessment guidelines that should be implemented for a cloud customer. Metrics act, starting point from a cloud, uh, particularly from a cloud contract. Okay. So we have an uh, particularly service organization control, which we already talked about it. We have an uh, the statement or standard attestation engagement that we call it as a double AES, okay, which are used for an auditing specification again by an American Institute for then particularly public accounts. Okay, so this audits are been designed to ensure the customer and the service provider, uh, particularly into in cloud security, by including or by any type of host by uh, or by any third party service meet has been uh, used by the uh, it it is it should be going to a professional standard within your double AES. Okay, so these are some of the standards. Which, uh, uh, which is very much dedicated to your security, GDPR, General Data Protection, where we are protecting all the data regulation, protection, we have an HIPAA again for in all the, uh, this secure uh, to particularly secure all the uh, health insurance, uh, portable accountability of an act. We have, uh, this again goes with your, uh, this European standard for an American standard, we have a double CPA, California Consumer Privacy Act, Okay, and again, if any transaction has been going on, if any particular data has been stored of an user, particularly for an account user, we should be follow this PCI IDSS standard. ISO, we have an ISO checklist for the security, goes with 27K. Okay, for the cloud, goes with 27, uh, again, 27, 17, and 27, 18. For then uh, this risk management, it goes with a 31K series. Okay, so these are some of the standard down the line you should aware of. Okay. Everything has been related to security, cyber security, what are standards which I had been shown. Okay, great. 